hello welcome to this video where basically i'm just gonna gush about diamond no ace i felt like the best format would be just me doing some journaling and rambling about act one of the manga which i recently finished rereading and i've just been so consumed with daya it has taken over my life i'm like a third of the way of act two at this point and i just wanted to talk about the series so this is going to be a very casual review of act one it's not really going to have a structure. I might talk about spoilers. I'm going to talk about my favorite characters, my favorite moments, stuff like that. Because there's surprisingly more fans of the series than I knew in my audience, I guess. When I was reading it, I posted a lot on Instagram and got a lot of replies and DMs about it. So because I know I'm not alone in being obsessed with Daya, I figured I could make a whole video. So this is for y'all out there. If you have no context for the story, Again, warning, there might be some spoilers. If you don't really care and just want to see my journaling, I guess that's cool too. But yeah, we're going to start with kind of this spread I wanted to do about all of like, I guess the main battery drama. And then all these pictures are actually screenshots from my reread. So I think that makes it a little bit more special. It's fun. But yeah, we have some like nice moments, kind of chapter cover illustrations that I thought were cool. So yeah, let's just go ahead and start. I'm pretty bad at multitasking though, so forgive me if I'm a little bit scattered. I'm also using my big journal today that I don't touch as often because I get intimidated by the big journal sizes for some reason. And if you have any questions about the supplies I'm using or anything like that, just drop me a comment. But yeah, so what is Diamond No Ace, I guess? If you're new, if you're totally, you know, just watching for the vibes. Diamond No Ace is a baseball manga. It is split into two parts, Act 1 and Act 2. Act 1 is 47 volumes, Act 2 is 43, so it's a really long series. There is an anime that covers up through like half of part 2, but the story is about our main character right here, Sawamura Eijin. He gets scouted to play at this like really prestigious baseball school or school that has a really good baseball team. So this is not some like underdog school that has never been to nationals or anything like that, to the Koshian. They haven't been in a while, so they're kind of, you know, looking to get their name back to live up to their hype, to their status, I guess. But since this team is, like, already established and stuff, the roster of kids, like, in the club is huge. There's, like, a hundred members of the baseball club. So the story is more about our main character kind of trying to get a spot on the starting lineup. He is a pitcher... And the club, like, already has a starting pitcher. They have relief pitchers. They have pitchers on the second string. Like, if you don't stand out, there's potential that you'll never play a game in your whole high school career. So you have to be the best of the best to get chosen. So the story is mainly his journey, you know, to become the ace or the starting pitcher on the starting lineup. The English translation uses terms like varsity and JV, which I thought was kind of interesting, but I guess it makes it more familiar to an American audience. But... You do, you know, see the trials and tribulations that our main character goes through. His character development is amazing. And, you know, you, you're you rooting for him for sure. Like, you want him to get that spot on the, you know, the starting pitcher, the ace number. But it's not always so simple. Salamura is, like, the embodiment of optimism. And he's always trying his best. And it just hurts even more when there are times that he doesn't succeed. There's ups and downs. He gets the yips at one point, which is like, you know, performance anxiety or whatever. Trauma from past missteps, not letting him perform to his greatest abilities. So yeah, he overcomes a lot and it's just, you feel like he can never catch a break sometimes. It can be frustrating seeing others surpass him, him getting, you know, passed up for opportunities, but that kind of makes the moments that he does succeed even more satisfying in my opinion. So definitely worth the read. Like I said, I have been obsessed I have read Act 1 before, and I have watched all of the anime, so I'm familiar with the story, like 75% of the story. I was waiting for Act 2 to finish up for me to, you know, dive into that part of the manga. And now that we have the K-Manga app that has it all on there, that's where I've been reading. The first, like, 16 volumes they had on Kindle Unlimited, and also my library had them. And then the rest I've been reading on K-Manga, including now Act 2. But I have just been having the best time. It's really high action really high drama, high stakes with the whole, you know, trying to get a spot on the starting lineup. The games are great. There's a couple, like, you know, recurring rival teams that they play. I particularly like Yakushi. I like Raichi. I like Sanada. 
I've always liked Sanada. He's always been one of my favorite characters. I like Mei. So yeah, it has been a long time since I revisited the story since I was a teenager. So it's also been like a good refresh, getting a new outlook on some of the characters that didn't stand out to me as much, you know, the first time around. My favorite character has always been Miyuki, which I think people know. I have like a whole eat bag dedicated to him. I have a lot of merch. I have figures. But this time around, I forgot how much of a little shit he is, honestly. Like, Miyuki is the catcher on the starting lineup here, right here. So his job is to, you know, guide the pitcher, make the calls for what they're going to throw. He's also an integral role in, like, keeping their mental, like, fitness in check. Also, like, I can appreciate a lot more of, like, the psychology behind things, why he makes the decisions he does. But off the field, he's such- he's a little troll. But I still love him. And, you know, a lot of other characters also stood out to me this time around, like, Furuya. I'll do a whole, like, spread for him and talk about him later, but... Yeah, I don't know. I'm really glad that I'm rereading the series. I have not read Act 2, so Act 2 is going to be new to me in the manga form. All I know is that Act 2 ended kind of abruptly because the author was just very burnt out. The art in Daya is amazing. It was a weekly series, I believe, so I don't blame him. I don't know if there will be an Act 3 eventually or if it's just done, but either way, it has been an amazing story so far. So yeah, what I love about Daya I guess like I mentioned is that it brings a different dynamic than some other sports manga where you know the team are the underdogs and they've never been to nationals and it's this struggle to the top. Daya is more almost about like the internal battle of the team and there's also interesting elements at play off the field like politics almost. Like since they are a well-renowned school and they're expected to get results you know the coach has a lot of internal struggles about like who to put on the roster and scouts from pro teams coming and they have backers on the board that are paying for all this stuff so it's a hard balance with like keeping players motivated and happy and not like crushing their dreams but also like they're trying to win they're serious contenders for nationals and stuff like that at the detriment to some of the players so yeah it can be quite painful at times in that aspect like you know we want a certain character to get on the lineup they've been working so hard they're swinging their bat day and night, day and night, but like if they're not getting results, if they mess up once, like they're out of there. It's cutthroat, ruthless. And I think when I was younger, when I read this the first time, I really hated like the coach characters, some of the characters that got a lot of spotlight when I didn't think they were as deserving, blah, blah, blah. But now, you know, in hindsight, I get more of the decisions that were being made. It still hurts my feelings. Like I still want my faves to get the best and you know, I see their struggles. As a reader, we see what they're going through. So yeah, it's hard. You get really attached and when things don't go a certain way, it's a little soul crushing. But I think that's what makes it good, right? Like the ability for a series to draw out those emotions in you, I guess. But in like particular with this page that I'm doing, the relationship between like, I guess these three, so Miyuki, Samura, Furia, it's interesting because, you know, these are the two like rival pitchers, but there's other pitchers especially when they first start, there's already an ace pitcher. How can we integrate these new members into the team? Which is how act two starts, I guess. It's like their second year. So there's also new players coming in, new pitchers, new catchers. And now the people that have moved up are, you know, trying to keep their spots on the starting lineup. Like even if you get on it once, like the next game, you could be out of there. It's very interesting. And there's like never a dull moment. And honestly, I'm probably going to write a lot on this. So I kind of want to keep it simple. I think this is good for now. I also have this sticker sheet I got from this user, so maybe I'll add a couple little accents. But yeah, there are so many characters, you want to root for all of them, and then also like kind of the interesting part about them being a powerhouse school. Sometimes you're rooting for like some of the other teams that they're playing. I found myself cheering at so many parts for like other teams and I was like, wait, wait, I'm supposed to be rooting for them. But yes, one of the like newer coaches, I think he comes in like halfway through act one. He has a very strong opinion about like the ace and building up the ace at the expense of the team. So for him, sometimes he's even like, who cares if we lose? Like it's more worth it to have this like game losing experience for our ace so he can overcome it. But then the other coach is like, no, I'm not gonna, you know, have the whole team lose just to build up this one person's skills. Like I was talking about with the politics, like there's so many layers to a lot of this stuff that is very unique to Daya. Like I haven't seen some of these discussions in other sports manga. Every sports manga has something that sets it apart. And for some reason, 
baseball is like my favorite sport i guess for sports manga i don't know there's just so much potential with the whole relationships the battery thing there's so many positions strategies i like how many different types of pitches someone can do the technical sides of things are interesting to me and then also you know the player the team dynamics you know i was an athlete all growing up and in high school so i'm familiar with the struggle okay so i think i'm gonna leave that off for this one for now and i'll do the writing later but yeah i remember i did this day spread in here and i was like i'm gonna do a spread of my favorite sports manga every month that i read because i'm trying to like read one a month and that kind of fell through but we're gonna get back on it we're getting back on it i haven't had time to journal honestly i've been so busy i just came back from detroit for work for the week i've been slacking but okay now i'm gonna do a spread for furia and then one for samura kind of you know opposite of each other but on the same one and now like i said i'll talk about furia so furia is like the biggest rival for our main character he's also vying for the top spot on the team as you can see you know kind of spoilers he does end up you know becoming the starting pitcher early on in the series and a lot of the struggle of Saomura is you know taking over the ace spot he's classified as like the relief pitcher so whenever Fudi is like doing bad he'll come in and save the day or you know he's the substitute he's the alternate not even the first alternate sometimes like I said there's other pitchers on the team but Furia is like this kind of prodigy he throws the ball super fast for like high school Japanese baseball standards so he's the immediate standout of like all the new first years that join and you know sometimes these types of characters are super cocky super bratty but he is not like that at all he is one of my sons so like all the characters are my sons basically but Furia is like one of the top sons i told y'all this was gonna be weird and rambly but like at the very beginning you learn he comes from hokkaido to tokyo to pursue his like baseball dreams in middle school he didn't really stand out because i guess his catcher like couldn't even catch his pitches they were just so fast he was so good so he never got like the full you know baseball experience i guess because he was just too good and coming to this team in tokyo now like he really just wants to find a place to belong like it sounds cheesy when i say that but like he literally says that he's like i just want to find a place to call home i want to you know be with other people that can match my skill set i won't i don't have to worry about like if someone can even catch my pitches i want to find teammates that can trust me and that i can trust and he's very deep so that's why it's like, even harder to not like like him because technically he is like the rival but he very much is like kageyama in haikyuu he doesn't act like the king or whatever but you know he is like a prodigy he's super good daya is kind of like if hinata and kageyama were vying for the same position like if hinata was a setter it's that type of vibe like at first they are pretty antagonistic towards each other because it's like you know you're my rival like i gotta beat you i gotta be better but their relationship throughout the story is probably one of my favorites to develop like they go from kind of these cold rivals to seeing each other as like actual rivals to borderline friends and like they also encourage each other a lot you know you want to go up against the best and there's back and forth like if someone's in bad condition like they get switched out and then you know it's always like oh i got taken off the mound like i'll never give you back my spot like i'm never getting taken off again and blah 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 so they have like a good friendship relationship which i'm happy about because like it's so easy to you know build resentment over something like this but they both kind of just take the opportunity to see this as like a learning thing but it still hurts to see them be pitted against each other so much like geez they're not the only two pitchers on the team but sometimes it feels like it and it's just a struggle especially for Sawamura. i've always really liked kind of protagonists like him that you know they go through hell they go through terrible situations terrible trials they go through the horrors but they still make it out the other side with like such a positive outlook he's like the hype man of the team every time he goes up onto the mound it makes me smile his whole catchphrase about like you know they're gonna get hit so thank you in advance blah blah, blah. he's just so effervescent and like charismatic and the thing with furia is like he sees all that and you know that's who he wants to be like he wants to be accepted by the team he wants to be trusted he wants to have friends but you know he's so like awkward and kind of shy and they're both just you know awkward team boys all the other people on the team are also just like dumb team boys so 
I don't know, it just gives such a nostalgic energy. I love the camaraderie. I mean, they do get into fights. There's a lot of drama in this. But at the end of the day, like, they're all here for baseball. They want the team to win. They want to get to nationals. They want to do what's best for the team. So, sorry, my phone ran out of storage. So I had to pause. But I think I was just, you know, talking about how even though these two get, like, pitted against each other and it's painful and it's sad sometimes, you know, I can appreciate that them as rivals, like, they spur each other on. They have a pretty good relationship. And I can't wait to see where the story takes us. You know, the end of Act 1... I really like how it was handled in terms of like the aftermath and the transition into act two was really good. I'm excited about all the new teammates and the shifting dynamics and seeing them, you know, them in the second year roles now, them becoming mentors, gradually developing as pitchers as well. Like Salmana's like new pitches are always so exciting. Furia, you know, he's the master of speed and aggressiveness. Seeing Miyuki like come into his role as the captain and also you know the starting pitcher and he's the cleanup batter like he has so much pressure on his shoulders as well which is why I always liked him in the past like I definitely understand the struggle I was a team captain for two years of one of my teams in high school and, you know it's another role kind of like the coach where you can't always be people's best friends you know you're there to motivate you're there to lead and it's hard because like with the pitchers and the catchers like you want the pitchers to be in their best condition but you know sometimes you know, Samuro will ask him to practice, but then if Furia says he wants to, the ace takes priority. Like, oh my gosh, it's so frustrating, but it's so good. Like, some of the most heartbreaking moments are in, like, these moments of, you know, back and forth. But it's, like, it's hard because you want to root for everyone. Like, no one is the villain. Everyone's working hard. But yeah, especially when their new coach comes in and feeds Furia all these ideas of, like, you can be number one in Japan. Like, you're letting your spot go for that guy? Like, well, like I just want to punch him in the face sometimes. But I also see where he's coming from. It's like, yeah, he also wants the team to be the best. And he considers, you know, nurturing the ace as the best strategy. But then you see other teams that succeed not in that way. But then other teams do. Like, the strategy of it all, the strategy. It goes above my head sometimes, but it's fun. It's fun. And then, you know, other storylines like seeing Nabe go into being more of a manager or like in charge of the stats and going to scouting so like everyone has their role and then those other two guys that decide they want to become more of like physical trainers for the team it's all so good and i know i'm gonna be sad when it ends because i feel like there's so much potential to develop like every one of these players on like the starting lineup at least could have their own like series about them and i would read them all i would eat it all up like haruichi and his whole story with his like brother complex and not being able to live up to expectations you know when he cut his hair when he cut his hair oh my gosh every time like the first time his bat got broken like he also has so much stuff going on a different perspective because he's like a batter not a pitcher kids knowing like you know okay we already have so many pitchers or whatever even though i'm a pitcher i'm gonna you know change to this other role so i even have a chance to get on the team and be on the starting lineup and be of use to the team like these kids should not be thinking about that kind of stuff but because of this environment that's how it goes and yeah tldr i highly 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 recommend demon ace you can read it for free on the k manga app if you're in the u.s or start it on kindle unlimited or watch the anime like anything this is such a special manga you know it gives a different dynamic with the whole like you know they're already a great school it's more so the internal struggle of the players and getting on the team. The character development is great. You see so many different types of players from different teams, different walks of life. You know, some of these kids are being recruited from all around the country. They're moving away from their homes. They're living in dorms. It's kind of like Shio Torizawa in Haikyuu. Like, they're that type of school. And I don't know, that dynamic is just so scrumptious to me. And yeah, so I think that's it. I'm going to do the writing and then I'll come back. Okay, this is the finished product, just to show. And yeah, sorry if this was all over the place. Honestly, I just wanted to rant and rave about Daya. Hopefully there was some semblance of coherence, but yeah, I love Daya. Everyone should read it, everyone should watch it. And I'm very excited to read more into part two. I actually haven't experienced like the latter half of act two. I know some spoilers for what happens just from seeing people as they were reading it back when this was coming out. But regardless, very excited. I am so obsessed with Daya. Maybe I'll do this again when I finish Act 2 or just talk about it more in a reading log. I don't know. 
DM me, leave a comment if you want to gush about Daya with me as well. I update more on Instagram as I go with these types of things. Have you read Daya? Have you heard of it? Have you watched it? Do you like sports manga? Is baseball super boring and you would never imagine even reading anything about it? I don't know. Let me know. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.